So we'll start with some uh, prayers. Then I'll lead the meditation. And the first part of the meditation will be just a few minutes of settling down, relaxing the body. And then we'll have about 10 or 15 minutes of silence. You can do the meditation on the breath. I'll give a little bit of instructions on that. Otherwise, if you know another meditation practice you would like to do to calm the mind, have more mindfulness, more clarity of mind, then you can do that. Then for the last part of the meditation, maybe 15 minutes or so, I'll lead a, a guided meditation, some thinking or contemplation type of meditation related to the topic um, of today. So um, each month in this Sharing the Dharma uh, program, Venerable Children is going through a book called An Open-Hearted Life, which is all about compassion, how to have more compassion in our mind and in our life. And it's written from the point of view of Buddhism as well as uh, Western psychology. So last month, the chapter that she read um, talked about how people's ability to feel compassion and show compassion can be affected by certain factors in their life. For example, the way they were brought up. So depending on how we are brought up by our parents or other caregivers, um, we might find it easier or more difficult to feel compassion and to show compassion to others. And um, Buddhism would add to that, that uh, in addition to factors in this life, like our family situation, our, our parents, our caregivers, and so on, other experiences we may have had in this life, we also bring with us things from past lives. <laughs> so Buddhism says, you know, we've had lives before this, and our mind can be affected by experiences in our past life. So the karma we created, the actions we created, as well as, um, you know, what kind of uh, qualities, positive or negative, were strong in us in our past lives. Uh, so we, if we practiced compassion in a past life, especially right before this life, then we would find it easier to have compassion in this life. But on the other hand, if we, um, maybe we were more kind of unkind and even cruel and we kind of behaved in that way a lot in our past life, then in this life we might find it harder to be compassionate. So, so anyway, there's factors as well from past lives that can affect us in this life and our ability to feel compassion. And so it's good to know this, because if we do have difficulty feeling compassion and showing compassion, it's not really our fault. It's not that we chose to be that way, but rather we are the product of all these different factors, different causes and conditions, both from this life and also from past lives. And Buddhism says everybody does have compassion, every living being has within their mind at least the seed of compassion or the spark of compassion. So it does exist in everyone's mind. And if we want to be more compassionate, we can. We can learn how to tap into that, that uh, quality in our mind, even if it's just very, very, very tiny, and then nourish it and develop it more and more. And then we will be able to feel more compassion and show compassion to others. And that's actually the topic that Venerable will be talking about today. The chapter she's reading today is about how to uh, feel more compassion and, and spread compassion. So in this meditation, the, the second part of the meditation I'm leading today, we'll look at just our own situation with regard to compassion, you know, do we feel we are as compassionate as we would like to be, or do we feel that it's lacking, it's deficient, and then just how to deal with that in a more 
healthy and self-compassionate way. We also need to have compassion for ourselves and not beat ourselves up thinking, oh, I'm so selfish and unkind and I don't have any compassion. So that kind of thought doesn't help at all. <laughs> I need to stop that. Okay, so that's just roughly what we're going to be doing in this meditation session. So when we meditate, the way we sit, the way we hold our body will have an effect on our mind and how well we're able to meditate. So it's recommended to sit in a particular position. If you can sit cross-legged, that's fine. Make sure your legs are crossed in a comfortable way that you'll be able to sit for about 30 minutes. And if you're sitting on a chair, that's fine too. Either way, whether you're sitting on the floor, cross-legged, or you're sitting on a chair, it's good to keep your back straight if you can, if you don't have some problem with your back that doesn't allow you to sit up straight. But if you can, sit up straight. That helps the mind to be more focused, more clear, better able to concentrate And you can have your hands resting on your lap. The usual way in our tradition is to have the right hand on top of the left hand. So your left hand is below, your right hand is on top, and the palms are facing upwards. And the two tips of the thumbs are touching, making a kind of little peak above your hands. So that way of holding the hands is said to be very conducive for the best state of mind for meditation. But if you know another way of holding your hands that you're used to when you meditate, it's fine to do that as well. And don't press your arms against your sides, but leave some space between your arms and your sides so air can circulate. Otherwise, the heat in our body can build up, and if we get too hot, that can make us sleepy. We don't want to fall asleep when we meditate. We want to stay awake. And another thing that can help us to stay awake is to keep the eyes open a little bit, not close them all the way. If we close our eyes, there's a greater chance of becoming sleepy and nodding off. So keep your eyes open a little and then have them looking down onto the floor in front of you or your lap, whatever is in your line of vision. So that way there's a little bit of light coming into the eyes and that can help us stay awake. But our eyes aren't fully open where we might get distracted by things we see. So if you're able to do that, good. If that's too difficult, it is fine to close your eyes but just try to make sure you don't fall asleep. And let your shoulders relax. Don't have them tight and hunched. So that's the recommended way of sitting. And it's also important to be as relaxed as possible, not stiff and tense. So if there is any tension anywhere in your body, see if you can let it go, release it. An easy way to do that is to just put your attention on the place in your body where you feel tension and just to tell yourself to relax. Just say to yourself, relax. And that might help the tension to go away. It's also important to have a relaxed mind. And to do that, check to see if there's any thoughts in your mind, 
left over from things you did earlier today or yesterday or last week or any time in the past. So if you're still thinking about, worrying about some issue, some problem, some project you have to do, leave those thoughts aside for now. Pick them up again later, but just put them aside for now. And do the same with any thoughts about the future, things you have to do later today, tomorrow, next week, or any time in the future. Now isn't the time to be thinking about those things, so put them aside as well. And just let your mind, your awareness be in the present, right here, right now, in this really beautiful, peaceful, quiet place. And it is hard to stay in the present because our mind has the habit of jumping to the past and the future and other places. So one way of keeping our mind in the present is by paying attention to our breathing because our breathing is happening in the present. It's right here, right now. So if we watch our breath coming in and going out, naturally our mind is in the present. So you can use that as the practice for this next period of time, about 10, 15 minutes. Be aware of your breathing, coming in, going out. If you know another practice you prefer to do, then that's fine. But otherwise, the breath is a very helpful way of being in the present and calming our mind down, being more relaxed, both in our body and in our mind. So just let your breathing be natural, not controlling your breathing, but just letting your body breathe. And then with your mind, your attention, be aware of each inhalation of the breath and each exhalation of the breath, one breath after another. And also continue being aware, even if there's a pause in between one breath and another, or between the inhalation and exhalation, don't let your mind run away, but stay right there with the breath. You can also count your breaths, that can be helpful to stay focused on the breath. If you're relatively new to meditation, you can just count up to five five breaths, then start again at one when you reach five. So just keep counting in rounds of five. If you're more experienced, you can go up to 10 or even up to 20, 21. So counting is optional, you don't have to do it, but it can be helpful just to stay on the breath and keep track of what your mind is doing and at any time, if you notice your mind has wandered away, is not paying attention to the breath, but is thinking about something else, as soon as you notice that, let go of that other thought and come back to the breath. Bring your awareness back to your breathing. Start again, start counting again. And have patience with yourself. Try not to get frustrated. So be kind to yourself, understand it takes time to learn how to manage the mind and keep the mind settled. So be content to just sit, breathe, be aware of your breathing, and coming back to the breath whenever the mind wanders away.
So now, now we'll start the um, contemplative part of the session. So I'm going to introduce some questions and thoughts for you to reflect on related to this topic of compassion, and then leave you some time to think about them. So do the best you can to stay focused on the particular question and not wander elsewhere. So if other thoughts come up that are not related to this uh, reflection and these particular questions, then again put those aside and bring your mind back to the topic we're meditating on. First of all, do you see yourself as a compassionate person or do you feel that compassion is lacking in your mind and in the way you live and interact with others? So basically, how do you see yourself, your way of being with regard to compassion? And then, do you ever find yourself comparing yourself with others in terms of compassion? For example, if you notice another person who seems very, very compassionate and able to express their compassion and act in compassionate ways, and maybe you think, oh, I'm not like that. They're so much more compassionate than me. So have you ever had that kind of experience? And if so, did that ever lead you to feel bad about yourself and maybe even criticize yourself, maybe even have thoughts like, oh, I'm hopeless, I could never be that way, I could never change the way I am. So just check to see if you've ever had those kinds of experiences. If you did ever have such thoughts, like criticizing yourself or even feeling hopeless about your ability to have compassion, then it's important to extend compassion to oneself. So there's a lot of talk in Buddhism about being compassionate to others but we also need to include ourselves in our compassion. We need to 
be kind and compassionate and patient towards ourself. So one way we can do that is by understanding that the way we are, like our personality and our strong points and our weak points and our, the way we act, the way we interact with others and so on, all, all of these things are the result of many, many different causes and conditions, many factors. So some of those are related to this life, like the way our parents or other caregivers raised us, the way they treated us. For example, one or both parents may not have been very expressive of love and compassion. And maybe they even had a lot of anger and were very angry and critical of us. So those are some factors that might affect our way of seeing ourselves, our way of feeling, our way of interacting with others and so on. So just think about your life and what kind of experiences you may have had in your family, at school, with friends, with other relationships that may have affected your way of being with regard to compassion, making it more or less easy for you to feel compassion and show compassion to others. And then in addition to uh, circumstances, conditioning in this life, we also bring with us things from past lives, our karma, uh, the residue of actions we did in, the, in past lives, and also propensities, depending on what kind of qualities we were strong in in past lives. So maybe in a past life we weren't very compassionate, maybe we were more angry and unkind, and that's what we brought into this life. So that's another factor making it difficult for us to be compassionate in this life. So understand that you didn't choose to be the way you are, but you are like the product of so many factors, causes, conditions from this life and past lives. So don't blame yourself for having a lack of compassion, not being as compassionate as you wish. and understand that it's possible to change the way we are. We all have compassion in our mind, even if it's just a tiny spark or a seed. So bring to mind a time when you did feel compassion. Even if you didn't show it, you may not have expressed it, but in your mind, in your heart, you did feel compassion for another person or another being.
Another way of getting in touch with compassion is by observing it in others. So think of a time when you observed someone else behaving in a compassionate way and really noticing that and being impressed with that. So, remembering moments of compassion in our own mind and observing compassion in other people are ways that can help us to be more compassionate. So, one thing we can do is is to really strengthen that wish, make it strong in our minds affirming to ourself that we want to be more compassionate just as we've been in the past and just as we observe in others. So we can do that right now as we conclude this meditation. Spend a few moments really feeling that wish to bring more compassion into your mind, into your life, into your relationships and interactions with others. You can make this a kind of aspiration or even a prayer. Spend a few moments doing that and really strengthen that wish to have more compassion as much as you can in your life. On top of having that wish, there's also lots of practical tools that we can use to have more compassion. So like this book that Venerable is going through, it's full of um, practical advice. And there's lots of other books as well, lots of, and on, online, of course. So there's lots of resources you can turn to that give you advice and tools on how to be more compassionate. So really make a determination to do that. Okay, so we uh, have a, yeah, yeah, let's make a mental dedication of what we have done so far, this meditation. Um, we can just do that in our own minds, in our own words, like um, by having done this meditation, may it help me to be more compassionate and bring more compassion into the world and help others to also be more compassionate. Okay, thank you.